Hello guys, Colin here, and today I'm tackling your tatas, the questions that at this stage you're too afraid to ask. This question comes from Bernardo Bizio and reads, What the f*** are the 100ma or 300ma stuff in my pedals? I honestly have no idea. And sorry if my English sucks. Firstly, Bernardo, your English is very good, so please do not apologise. However, if I was to be pedantic, some capital letters would improve the grammar for next time. I've seen variants of this question pop up time and again in relation to pedals and power supplies. These numbers are a rating of electric current. When printed on a pedal, it tells you how thirsty for power that pedal is, and when printed on a power supply, it tells you just how much juice it can give out. The MA stands for milliamps, thousandths of an amp, and each pedal will draw a different amount of milliamps depending on its circuit design. But to truly understand these numbers, and so that we don't get them confused with other related numbers, we must firstly talk about the fundamental physics behind electricity. But before we do, allow me a moment to talk about Skillshare, who have made this video possible. Skillshare is an online learning community which has over 25,000 classes on music production, graphic design, filmmaking, marketing, and technology. Perhaps you want to learn how to mix music in your home studio. Skillshare has courses for that. Design a killer logo and brand detail for your band or business. Skillshare has classes to get you started. One thing I want to improve on for my videos is animated graphics as I feel they really help communicate complex technical topics to the viewer. So to that end, I've been looking at Daniel Scott's After Effects course on animated infographics in the hope that I can build on my skills. The first 500 people to click on the link provided in the description will receive two months free Skillshare membership where you can learn as much as you want. It's like an all-you-can-eat education buffet. If you feel like you've learned everything you possibly can in those two months, then you can walk away obligation-free. But should you want to stick around and expand your knowledge further, then a Skillshare annual subscription is less than $10 a month, and a premium membership gets you unlimited access to all the learning your brain can handle. So whether it's baking a cake, creative writing, or web development that interests you, Skillshare is the place to learn. Click on the link to get your two months free trial. When powering any device, be it a pedal, an amplifier, your mobile phone, or even something as simple as a light bulb, there are two main values you need to take into consideration. Voltage and current. Voltage in an electrical circuit can be viewed in a similar fashion to pressure in a water pipe. In order to push electricity around the circuit, the correct voltage is required. Too little voltage and the device won't be able to operate, but too much voltage and electronic components can rupture in a similar fashion to how a water pipe can burst with too much pressure. The vast majority of pedals that you will come across require 9 volts DC to operate effectively. Plug a 9 volt pedal into a 12 volt power supply and you could well be looking at a fried pedal. So unless explicitly stated that the pedal can handle a higher voltage, don't do it. Resistors and diodes can burn out, capacitors can pop, and your pedal will only be useful as a doorstop if you feed it too many volts. So ensuring the voltage matches exactly the required value is essential. Electric current, on the other hand, works a little differently. Current is the flow rate of electric charge around a circuit, and just like blood coursing through your veins, an electrical circuit needs enough current flow delivered at the correct voltage to be able to function. We measure current in amperes, or amps for short, and our effects pedals are generally low current draw devices requiring only tens to hundreds of milliamps in order to function. The critical word here is current draw. A device will draw from the supply the current that it needs to function, and not a milliamp more. If a pedal needs 100 milliamps to operate, it will take only that 100 milliamp from the supply, even if the supply has many more amps to give. Connecting a 100 milliamp draw device to a 2 amp supply won't flood the device with the full 2 amps, rather the device will take the 100 milliamps it needs, leaving the remaining 1.9 amps unused. So a current rating on a pedal will tell you how much current it will take, whereas a current rating on a power supply tells you how much current it can give. Pedals differ in how much current they require depending on their design. Analog overdrives, compressors and distortions, for example, can be as low as 4 milliamps, but rarely exceed 20 milliamps. Analog modulations and delays can be between 20 and 50 milliamps, perhaps, going as far as 100 milliamps for more complex circuits. Digital pedals, due to their computer-based DNA, require more current. 100 milliamps upwards for single pedals, but 300 milliamps and more is common for larger digital pedals. 
and anything running valves needs more current to power the heaters. Half an amp for a single valve isn't unusual. It's not uncommon for digital pedals that their average current draw is far lower than the nominal rating, but they do require a lot higher current on startup in order to launch all of their digital processes. It's for this reason that power supplies for pedals may offer many different outlets of all different current ratings so that you can choose which pedal suits best which outlet. This Mission Engineering 529 supply can feed four pedals up to 150 milliamps and one pedal up to 500 milliamps. Connecting something like target mids to the 500 milliamp supply won't damage the pedal, but it is still a little foolish as the pedal only requires 50 to 80 milliamps to function, leaving most of the power in that socket unused. However, some of you won't have multi-outlet power supplies like this and instead have a single wall warp power supply with a daisy chain connection. In this case, it's exceedingly important that you consider your current consumption, as the total current output of the power supply will be distributed across all the pedals connected. If your power supply can dish out one amp total, then you need to ensure that the pedals connected don't exceed a sum of one amp overall. Otherwise, the power supply will brown out and you won't be able to power your pedals. It's worth mentioning polarity at this stage. DC current can flow in one of two directions around a circuit. Which direction the current flows is dictated by the power supply. For the majority of pedals, you will see this symbol. This indicates that the negative should be on the center of the power jack and the positive on the outer. Connecting a pedal to the opposite polarity, center positive, will at best prevent the pedal from powering on and at worst damage components within the pedal. Always ensure that your device is connected to the correct polarity of power supply. Another word that I've been using here is power. Power, measured in watts, is the product of voltage and current. Product being the fancy maths word for multiplied together. So a power supply that can deliver five amps at nine volts has a power rating of 45 watts. This is a vital piece of information if your power supply doesn't explicitly state its output current. So to recap, the milliamp rating tells you how much current the pedal requires to operate. The pedal will only take the current it requires even if the power supply is capable of giving more. Connecting a low current draw pedal to a high current outlet won't cause any damage, but it isn't the most economic use of the supply. And remember that voltage and polarity aren't so forgiving, so always ensure you have them exactly as rated on the device. If you have any questions of your own that you are too afraid to ask, please do leave them in the comments section and perhaps they will become the topic of a future Tata video. It's never too late to learn. And if you've liked this video and you want to see more content from me, then you can hit that subscribe button which will notify you of all new videos as they come out. My Patreon's also there for exclusive secret stuff, t-shirts are available and there's other videos that you may not have seen. But that's all for now though guys, keep it loud and I'll see you later. It's current, not current.